So as someone who does a lot of style GAN training, uh, hands down, like one of the biggest questions I get asked every time is, how big does my data set need to be in order to actually train a good model? Um, I'll usually try to say like a thousand just because from my own experience, that's about what I find works well. Um, and of course, people are always like, can I get lower? Can I do 50? Can I do 100? Um, and I'm really happy to say that like someone's actually put out a paper recently that tries to look into this and tries to create an answer. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Dusk, a good friend of the Slack channel. Uh, they were nice enough to post this in one of the Slack channels. Um, and I think it's a really interesting paper. Um, it mostly covers, you know, StyleGAN and, and it tries to answer really the question of like, how much data is really necessary in order to uh, train a good model? Now, a couple of things about this uh, paper before I get too far into it, it is based on StyleGAN 2. Um, so I think, you know, whether that's good or bad or how, what that tells us about sort of more of the ADA versions or StyleGAN 3, um, it's a little hard to say, but um, I think it's an interesting paper and I think it's worth reading and it's fairly readable. I mean, not a lot of papers are, um, I know a lot of papers tend to be have full of math and I don't think this one has a lot of math in it. Um, well, I guess there is some math here, but um, you know, for the most part, I think uh, a lot of the way that people try to solve, like, is this a good model or through metrics like uh, FID score. Um, and I'll be doing a video on FID score in the near future as well, just so people can understand what that is. But I think this is really interesting because they took a much more humanistic approach to it. So the question becomes, how do we judge whether a model is good or not or replicating data? They really focused on the latter part. They said a, the, the key for style again is that it needs to produce new images. It shouldn't replicate the same images you've already shown it. Um, I have a little bit of a beef with that because I think there's multiple ways that people use StyleGAN, right? Like one thing could be that if you have a really good latent space and you're able to interpolate, even if all the images that it shows are images you've already seen in your data set, but you get smooth interpolations, I think that's a totally valuable tool because you can't use that anywhere else. Um, but they're sort of focusing on individual static images, right? So uh, the way that they approach this is they actually generate a bunch of images and they had humans sort of say, this looks like the original, this looks like a new image, that sort of thing. So um, Again, there's no metric necessarily like that you can, you can generate here to test against your own data set, um, but they did go th sort of through it and, and try to define that. Um, and I guess I'll put the spoiler here now, now that you've been listening for three minutes. Um, the key that, or the number that they found is 1,300. So they decided that 1,300 images is about the right um, a number that you need in order to be able to uh, create new images from your StyleGAN model. Now again, um, they don't mention whether they use mirrored data here, so I don't know if that is 1300 raw images or would that be 650 uh, mirrored. Um, and again, this is on StyleGAN 2, but they also tested on BigGAN as well. Um, StyleGAN 2 ADA claims that the ADA function using augmentation means you can use a smaller data set. So again, your mileage may vary on, on different things, um, but I would generally say based on this paper, 1300 is the number you want to go for. So that actually correlates pretty closely with what uh, my suggestion is, which is 1000. Um, and again, I think 1000, and if you can mirror your images, I think that really gets you to a place that's pretty good. Um, I would love to see this test run again with ADA or with StyleGAN 3. I have heard that StyleGAN 3 is actually worse if you are using the rotation version um, versus the translation version. So. Um, you know, again, I think there's there's lots to update here, but it is good to see that some um, people are focusing more on data sets. I think a lot of um, research focuses a lot on how to improve models, um, and I would love to see more papers focus on how to improve data sets, right? So whether it's alignment or whether it's um, types of images or that sort of thing, um, I think it'd just be really helpful for more of us who do train our own models to really understand what works and what doesn't. Um, so I'll drop a link to this paper uh, in the show notes, but if you're interested, um, I highly recommend checking this out. Um, let me know if you found that you can get a data set that works with 500 images. Um, I think it's totally possible, uh, and it really comes down to the type of images. Um, but I'm really excited to see this work, and I hope to see more of it. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts on it if you do read the paper, uh, and I will see you next time. Thanks.